Good morning, everybody. Uh, Malcolm Ellis uh, from LIC and the role of General Manager of New Zealand Markets. Um, I just have been in a small series here of just updating some ideas and options as a farmer um, with the way we utilise SGL, um, our, our range of SGL products, whether they be um, here, SGL Hereford, SGL Dairy, and different aspects of your farm system. We talked about bull fatigue and the way we can combat that, but the example I want to use now is um, by definition extending mating but not extending the following year's calving pattern. That is the key, an opportunity to extend mating that doesn't impact next year. And if we have a look at an example, and I whiteboard it just for a moment, now on a standard farm that might be doing in the order of six or seven weeks AB, or whatever the case may be, maybe it's four to five, but this AB period through here, we then have an example where either farmers then, and this is where the replacements are coming from, which is fine, but then farmers that don't employ the bull will often then kick in here with SGL, which is great, and through to the end of the mating season. Those farmers that do use the bull during this period of time after their traditional period of AB, my encouragement is that when we get to that final bull out date, it's the impact we could have on the number of empty cows and the options we would have if we were to extend for, fo for the following 12 days beyond the date that you would usually uh, complete your mating period. If you were to extend for a further 12 days with SGL dairy, these animals end up calving in here next year. We're extending the mating, but not extending the calving for next year. If I just to look at an example of what that would mean, I'm going to use a thousand cow farm only so that the numbers are nice and rounded for us to be able to work with. But th this is an actual example of one that I've worked with with a farmer last year. But a thousand cow farm gets to the end of the standard mating period with 16% non-pregnant cows. So 160 odd cows not pregnant on the farm. If we were to extend um, AB on, uh, or, or uh, reinstigate AB and extend mating for 12 days with SGL, it is conceivable that half of those cows um, could end up cycling during that period of AB, 80 odd extra cows submitted. During, and, and at that stage, it is quite conceivable that, again, half of these could conceive during that period of time. Now, some will say that if they haven't gotten calf by then, they're not going to get in calf. And I understand that, but what I'm seeing in examples of this is that some of these cows, particularly young cows, they just need time. They just need time. And then if we consider, and I'm just going to pluck some numbers, right, but if we consider that the average um, cow this year or a, or a good quality um, herd of cows this year is going to have a two in front of it, so the value of a dairy animal being $2,000, and we assume that a later calving cow might be worth about $1,700, so in other words, a margin between the two of three. And if we also assume that an empty cow is worth $1,000, then the difference between a late calving cow and an empty cow is $700. In the case of the 1,000 cow farm, where we've ended up with a further 40 cows that are late pregnancies instead of empty cows, not only have we shortened up uh, the empty rate from 16% to 12%, but we have also taken the, uh, I guess, the value of some of those cows, that 40 cows at $700 being a late calving cow versus an empty cow, uh, meaning that it's pretty much a $28,000 decision for the farm. What it comes down to, no one likes having late calving cows. Like one of the things I learnt in 20 years of farming is there's more money in a milking cow than a dry cow. But what I also learnt in that period of time is that I'm, I'm pretty keen to have some options up my sleeve. So if you've got some late calving cows, at least you can look and make an informed decision that actually of those 40 cows, I'll keep the top end of them and those 10 that are not even at the bottom end of the herd, but maybe they're just in the second half of the herd. I don't want that older, poorer quality cow that's calving late. They're gone. So maybe you make the decision that you just bring 30 of those cows through to the following year at the $700 difference we're talking about. We're talking 21K instead of 28. But it just gives you significant options um, and brings down this rate of non-pregnant cows to give you some choice, to give you some choice around the individual animals. 
Clearly, if this is a 500 cow herd, these numbers are going to look more like 18, uh, sorry, uh, like 14,000 and uh, 10 and a half. But you can do the numbers according to your herd size. I guess my recommendation, farmer to farmer, is that it is well worth considering the impact of standardising, extending mating at the end of your desired end point of mating this year, but not impacting on the length of your calving pattern next year. It will give you choice.